What's going on, reef builders? I am Jake Adams. Thanks for joining me for another video from the Worldwide Coral Superstore. I hope you enjoyed the first installment where we took a big, overwhelming tour of everything the store has to offer. I think there's 11 display tanks just in the retail show floor and thousands of corals available for sale. It looks like you're at a frag swap, but the nuts and bolts of Worldwide Corals is not just the retail store. There is a whole factory of corals propagation and cultivation through these doors so normally this is uh, limited only to employees and staff but we're going to take a look uh, literally peek behind the curtain to see what worldwide corals is also about so this is the main event of worldwide corals. This is where they grow all their corals, collect. You can hear somebody sawing, cutting some corals in the background. And it's just, you could almost get lost in here. If I was just a little smaller, this whole place would just be a maze, a maze of aquariums. There's gotta be hundreds, maybe like 100, 150 radions and just like a ridiculous amount of vortex. All these tanks are flowed with vortex. Look how far down that goes. In that direction, another bank over here, and there's more over here. So, I, you know what, I, it's hard to make sense of uh, where everything kind of starts and ends, but I do believe that these three tanks right here are somewhat broodstock tanks and they are filled, they are connected to one system right here. So this is all aquaculture here. There's another bank of aquaculture tanks over here and another one down this row. So a lot of the mother colonies are being grown in a veritable reef style aquarium, a reef aquarium environment. So all of these are for grow out. Some of them do get cut and all the aquaculture frags go over here. So there's a lot more mother colonies over here. And then the giant amount of brood stock and livestock across these tanks. Okay. So one thing that I found really, really interesting is that worldwide corals doesn't actually dose hardly at all. Almost all of these tanks are run purely with calcium reactors. Every one of their display tanks, every one of their brood stock tanks, and um, I do believe there's also uh, some degree of uh, calcwasser dosing as well. So I don't know how big this tank is appearing on camera, but this has got to be at least a 600 gallon aquarium. And um, one thing that actually really uh, caught my attention when I checked out these tanks this morning is I was here last night and this water was super clear. So you see that slightly green tinge across each of the aquariums? That is from the copious amount of food that they add to all these tanks. So imagine how much food they have to add to these probably two to 3,000 gallon systems to give them just a little bit of color. I know they feed a little bit of everything, phytoplankton, oyster feast, particulate foods, um, amino acids, but look at that color change. That is not dirty water. That is how much food they add to these tanks. But when you see how many hungry mouths there are in all of these tanks, you see why they have to do it. You can't, you can't just feed the fish when you have this many corals. So this is something I'm definitely going to uh, incorporate in my own reef aquarium uh, techniques that I'm going to start feeding a lot more. You know, I, I've always kind of prioritized a lot of super clean water, but seeing just that slight green tinge in these tanks from the feeding is actually quite exceptional. And they add, um, I think I was told, uh, they feed twice a week. So two days a week, they just, just pound the tank with food. And um, the results really show when you take a look at just how puffy and large and vibrant all of these corals are. Oh man, to be perfectly honest, you guys, there is way beyond my ability to narrate and show you everything here back in the farm. But what I'm gonna do is I do wanna take a closer look at this broodstock tank because there are some fantastic colonies, some amazing specimens in this tank. And then we're gonna go check out the uh, aquaculture section here in the back and uh, just take a look at a lot, a lot of their mother colonies um, because there's a, so much activity going on over there 
I don't really want to get in anybody's way, but uh, we're gonna do our best to show you some of the uh, some of the primo mother colonies here behind me. So let's take a look. So something you're gonna hear me say over and over and over again about worldwide corals is just like multiple degrees, like several different tiers of overwhelming. We're just looking at uh, the first of these broodstock tanks. Is that what you consider them? Broodstock tanks? Yeah, I guess, yeah. That's what we plan. And, and we're getting a top-down look and there's just, it's just a, it's a whole nother view, just another, whole nother field of corals. You can see down, you can see in between. There's a ginormous acanthophilia just like down in the chasm. There's, you know, you can see a good amount of corals from the side, but from above, it's just like, it's crazy, crazy. I do like how they've, um, a certain couple places, they've glued several of the, uh, the same corals together to try to encourage the development of a super colony. I think we've got some uh, Bernard Pora there. There's another one, another Bami over there of all the same ones. So when they all grow together, imagine they can, the th is down there. They can rip off the plugs and then let it grow back. Some space invader there just owning <laughs> that whole little hole. You can't even see that from uh, from the sides. And this uh, is this the dragon soul right here? Yes. Dragon soul. So I, ha I definitely have that coral, but yours looks a little better than mine. Not, 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 not too much, but one thing I'm really taking home from looking at all your corals, since I've only been looking at my corals, is like, my corals are skinny. I need to feed a lot more. I've been trying to feed my fish a lot more, but uh, seeing the discoloration of your water from how much food you're adding, that is, that is something else. Oh God, all right, I think I've, people keep asking me if there's a coral I love. The Ghani. The Ghani with the it's super crazy. bright like tips. With purple. I actually I have a Bernard Pora like that that I got at a Reef Palooza many years ago, but I need a Ghani like that. Josh, he likes that Ghani over there. Which one? The yellow tip? see it from the top. It looks great from there, but from the top it's just insane. It's it's insane. And how often do you get up here and, and, and have a good look at your uh, corals? Once or twice a month, you know, I mean, not often, but we try to. Usually, you know, it's funny when people come over and we show them the tank, that's when we get to see it. So we get to enjoy it with you guys, you know? <laughs> I'm a little bit the same way. When people come over, I'm like, oh, let me wipe down all the tanks, turn down the flow, look at everything from above. God, and there's two more of these. There's two more tanks like this. Got this one in development for, I'm seeing mostly SPS, and another mixed reef back there. And these are 750 gallon tanks. How, what did you say the dimensions were? Uh, eight by five by 30 inches tall. Eight by five by 30, glass. This is, this is you have so much glass in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Any more glass and you guys might as well just like start up your own factory. Let's see if I can get a little close up tour of certain things here. Got some classic Satosa. Got, uh, let's see. I think that's the branching green cap. Branches when it wants that, to. I think that's the Tyria with the Verculata, whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. A little, like a yellowish tint to it. Little orange and green hammer, branching hammer, kind of a frog oh, frog hammer. Yeah, I'm getting over that one. And then pipe organ. I have some pipe organs. I actually think I have that strain, but it's just, it took a while to get them the healthy. It really did. You got to make sure they're clean inside because they have that that super porous skeleton, and uh, stuff can really grow in there. But man, that one is super luscious. Again, you see all the my seating from the bottom in there. Even that chalice right there, it looks like it's splashed. Yeah. Where, where'd it go? Yeah, that one right there. God, super awesome. You know what? You can take a picture of that all you want, but until you see it in real life, like as best as I can do to like correct the color on here, it just doesn't do it justice. I know that's kind of cheap to say, but it's so freaking true. What else do we have? Let's take another look at the uh, Dragon Soul. That's a good name for that coral. I don't think there's any other corals named Dragon Soul. What else do you want to point out? Now the blue Ghanis, they don't uh, they don't pop in, in blue light, but still very, very interesting with those yellow mouths right there. There's some cool bloody gyros down here. I think it's cool how that thing is growing. Just like how everything is in proximity, get them along with each other, you know? Don't fall off the edge now. No. <laughs> and there, let's see if I can get a better look at the the crazy Ghani. Do you have any frags of that? 
Or is that? Uh, I'm is, not sure. We have to have just. We got a lot of going for us over there. Is that the? Uh, chance they might have it. That's the unobtainium strain right there. And I guess that's a. I can't tell if that's an Alveo right next to it. Yes, right behind the yes. So we've climbed up on the other side of the same tank. Just for reference, those are pectinia chunks. And so when they grow together, that's going to be like a, a super colony. A great, oh man, this, this recordio over here is insane. Giant, giant Yuma. And uh, Vic was pointing out how this green Ghani kind of has the blue stalks, oh, yeah. adding a really nice contrast to the tentacles. And then just right over here, you've got this highlighter green one. I wonder if I have that strain from you guys, but it's just not, mm -hmm. not as fluo, not as crazy fluorescent. Oh, one of my favorite corals of all time, the Hero Turbinaria. Man, I'd be remiss if I didn't show you this super orange tip frog spawn. That's crazy. Another look at that pipe organ. Pipe organ doesn't get nearly enough love, man, but that is a super cool one. The paddle, I think there's probably two species. This one hasn't been recognized. Look at that one in the middle. But the thin branch or the thin tentacle one uh, grows really fast. What are you pointing out? The Gonyovora. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's nuts, man. That is nuts. Yes, I'll take a frag of that. <laughs> And even, even forest fire, you know, like when you get any coral in the peak of health, everything just super, super jamming. Goodness gracious. Kind of at a loss of war for words on the diversity and the color. There's no filter on this, you guys. I mean, I've white balanced it with this camera, but there is no orange filter to give it that artificial pop that you see from, you know, cell phone photography. Got to give another look to the, uh, the unobtainium Ganiapora. Yes, I'll take a frag of that, please. And then this super bold, contrasty Alviapora. But let's just take a moment to really appreciate that. Wow. Man, these corals are, I can't believe how much they've grown. It's only been one year. Super crazy. And then where's that one? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I have a lot of corals, but this is one that you can see the size of the tentacles in reference to the, uh, in relation to the uh, bang guys. Oh, look at that freaking crazy strain. All right, well, I definitely have a, uh, a mission on my hands. Let's take a look, see what else we can find in this tank. This, this frog's torch looking thing, a little bit of a, hybrid a blend of tentacle features. Um, there's one of those Platygyra goniastrias with the pink valleys and the green mouths. Just absolutely sensational. Vic totally derailed whatever I thought I was gonna do back here at the farm, but I gotta tell you, this view is even better than being at the ground level. And there's just, there's so many corals that I, I could show you, or I could just focus on the top downs of this crazy aquarium. I want you to know that this coral is, this color of these corals is true to life. Seen top down, there's no filter, just an appropriate amount of white balance. It's exactly what it looks like. We got the overhead lights turned off. That's why I look kind of ghostly, but it's fun. I think this is a, a more fun, uh, demonstration of what's happening in St. Vic. There's Vic. <laughs> oh man, are you proud? Yes, we still got more to go, man. Whew. I don't think I don't think I can. I could just show this the top of this tank over and over and over, and every time I just spy something new. How many corals do you think are in here? Ooh, about maybe 800, I'm thinking. I'm thinking five to six but that many, yeah. it's all relative and then they'll fuse into each other and then there'll be fewer, but there'll be more polyps. Yeah, yeah if you count each little frog, it's just too many. <laughs> too many to count. So this is the uh, 750 gallon. Number three. It's number three, kind of the broodstock grow out. I like it up here, this is much easier. And how, what's the total volume of the tanks attached to it? 
It's about 200 gallons each. 200. Right over 1,200 gallons. So about 2,000 gallon system? Yeah, roughly. Not so much the, the gallons, but the surface space that we get back there with the mm -hmm. six tanks together, I think it adds up to... Uh, Man, so much variety. 24 by 6 is back there, so... Probably 150 square feet of growing space per tank. This is a this is a collector tank right here. I mean, once the corals are grown out, you have to take out what three quarters of yeah, the corals. Yeah, have to. Yeah. What it was that uh, we run all these aggregates to quarantine, and when they're small, it's hard to tell what's what. And we just glue a couple hundred of them, and as the, sometimes they start, we can tell they're the same. We put them next to each other, and then we eliminate them if we know they're in other display tank. It's a whole process just just processing this amount of corals that we do around. Here. I bet there's so many different details of your workflow that you don't, you can't even articulate everything that you do, right? You couldn't actually write down everything you do to process new and old corals. Yeah, that's why we got such a large amount of employees processing all these corals. Yeah, I'm gonna highlight a few corals. We've got a dark, oh, this is an oddball, dark green forest green alveopora, which is bright green flower petal-like tentacle tips. A few different uh, bounce varieties here. Looks like the OG bounce on the left. Not sure what the one is on the top right. This is a uh, purple people eater favia right there. Yeah, that's a little, like a dark horse coral. That looks like uh, the tubs blue zoanthid right there, looking a little dark in the blue light. Definitely a core that shines better in white light. A few more fireworks of Ganyapora. And it looks like to be, I don't know, something like 200 frags, 200, 300 frags, just conditioning and growing out all over the place. Let's see if we can take a closer look at some of them. No idea what any of these are for the most part. That, you know, one coral that I always try to think I can recognize is the the PC rainbow. That looks like a PC rainbow right there. Orange bit is uh, clearly a Satosa. It might be a pink lemonade right there, although it looks a little, little extra shaggy, a little red to be a pink lemonade. The, what is this one? Is this, is this the, uh, the gumdrop, I think? All right, focus, focus, focus camera. There you go, you can do it. Man, so much diversity. But I definitely gotta bring you back over here to a couple. You got a nice yellow torch coral here with some, uh, some green on the inside. And then this really weird, crazy odd, multicolored Skittles looking hammer. It's got translucent orange tips, green interior. This thing looks crazier in real life. Not retina burning bright, but very much an unusual coral. There's another look at that very bizarre color morph of a hammer coral. And what's interesting is there's actually no flow going on in this tank right now. It's just a couple of the large showy surgeon fish every now and then they'll give it a little flap of their tail near the water surface and uh, cause a little bit of rippling. So here's again, kind of that branching these channels. This is starting to become definitely like a signature of worldwide corals aquascaping. You see, uh, you know, one arm right there, one arm right there, another tendril coming off there. And I think this is actually a really clever way to maximize how many corals you can put because you can put corals on both sides, on both sides of the, of the arm, as well as the top, allows flow and light to get in, into it and uh, creates a nice diversity of, uh, of habitat. I do believe we've seen this orange recordia rock before at the old farm. There was a big old stack of wild Florida, well, I guess it wasn't wild, it was, I think it was a trade-in, but it's on a giant rock. So I'm guessing that rock we saw in a previous video. I'll have to check the archives, see if I can find it. That's a really nice thick colony of slime ball and acropora. Um, another look at the frags. Sorry if I'm going fast, but 
can't just sit there and focus on one coral at a time. A little bit of a rainbowy Stylophora right there, and one of my super favorites, a rainbowy, or no, green, green Styla right there. Very, very nice. And this is super cool. We've got another cluster of hammer coral, but there's a peach colony here that's got like a little splash of green. And if you don't look closely, it looks like it's just another branch inside, but I think those tentacles are growing from the same base. So very, very interesting. I hope you guys are enjoying the eye candy. I was gonna try to, uh, I guess, try to tell you a little bit more about the farm back here, but um, I think there's just so much action going on back there and just keep getting in people's way. So we'll, uh, we'll just stick to some eye candy. Got another convalescent colony of uh, Space Invader Pectinia. Man, this Blasto is like really, really, really bright. We got some of the, the choice chalices back here some super green solid green sun polyps another turbinaria hieronensis and uh, this is a coral that really deserves a lot more love it's a neon green cabbage leather coral <laughs> and then totally hidden totally hidden from side view it's a giant bubble just way down in there. Those vesicles, no joke. Each one is about at least two inches long. That one uh, in the shade, maybe close to three inches long. Super, super awesome. All right, guys, you see that back there? This is the culmination of 10, 12, 15 years of worldwide corals coral collection of purely broodstock aquacultured coral. So there's not a shred of wild coral back here, so I'm told. And these are all in line with their respective broodstock aquarium. But that's not all. <laughs> there's so much more out there. At least, oh, let's say double, double the surface area of corals. So I think there's a concentration of broodstock over here. I don't know for sure. Nobody even knows. There's, this place is so big, no one person can answer all the questions. But this section is purely aquaculture. And over here, propagation, WYSIWYG, things VIX picks, and that's all ship out. So I'm gonna do my best to just walk you through these tanks slow enough that it doesn't take an hour. <laughs> This looks like the uh, Montipora Bank right here. Alcorn, Sunset, Undata, Rainbow, Poker Star. I'm just throwing out random names. So this looks like a nice little Montipora. Yeah, I think it's mostly Montipora in here. We got a few more mother tiles, it seems. Here we have more of the uh, Kung Pao. Beach bum. I don't know what this one is right here, but it definitely should have Apple in the name. Look how cool that is. And this one right here. Crazy nodules. Crazy nodules. Is that, uh, oh God, I forget what that's called. So here's the uh, mostly Montipora section. Just some Montes, mostly encrusting. Let's see what we got in here. Here we have a mix of chalices and favias and favites. A little bit of micromusa mixed in there. Look at the crazy color inside this one. Just red with a mint mouth and an orange edge. Incredible. Just really, really stunning. And the tanks are so clean. I'm so jealous. I have so much more sponge growing in my tanks and it's freaking annoying. I don't see any sponge, unwanted algaes, unwanted sponge, or aptasia. I asked Vic, he said, you know, once in a while they pop up in here, but uh, yeah, so far so good. We've got a 
closer look at a nice dragon sole. Now this one's got the subtle beauty, just whew, just a light, the lightest little emerald green inside with not the bright, but obvious orange tips. So here's kind of a, a normal peachy hammer by comparison. See the, uh, the tentacles themselves are brown, the tips are orange. This one, the tentacles themselves are green, the tips are orange. Really, really awesome. Ooh, I haven't seen these tanks like this yet. Got some alveopora. These are not even like rare strains, you know? It's just everything is just in the peak of health that it's just absolutely glowing. Some pink alveopora, I got me some of that. My little green center pink alveopora. Oh, can't believe I almost missed it. Some psycho insane symphilia. Also nice. So I've seen reds with some orange, but this one is so tangerine. If I was gonna steal one coral, it would be this one. This is the coral I would steal. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get too much backlash for that, but yeah. These corals are awesome. We definitely got the recipe down. And then there's some of this like really wild, wild Blastamusa strains. The, uh, the edges of the polyps on this one are just, you know, kind of pinkish mauve, but real cool green inside. And there's, you know, rainbowy well -si. Super nice. And here's the zoanthids. I think they did some work on these. So these are kind of in the process of being cut up and divided. So let's go around, check out the next one. Now here's a super bizarre one because it kind of looks like an elephant ear, elephant ear mushroom, but the tentacles are way longer than they should be. This is a very bizarre mushroom anemone. It's probably, oh, I'd say six inches across, but it isn't, doesn't even have room to spread out completely. So every coral you see here, from what I'm told, has never been in the ocean. This is all aquacultured. I think I need to pick up this grate. I wouldn't do that normally, but I see some fire underneath. Let's see if I can do this delicately. Yes. Look at that Favites, Favites pentagona. Bunch of war coral frags. Some green cabbage and another one of those. Can you grab that? Thank you. There's that blasto again. Another gani section. If you look closely, man, all these ganis, they just have such subtle details from the color of the interior of the colony, the base of the stalk, tentacle tip. Freaking nuts. I actually have this. I definitely have this one right here. It's kind of a blend of the blue tenuidens with some pink but I need to take it out of my top-down tank so I can actually see it and enjoy it. Ooh, you got another cache of Wilson eyes. Wow. Vic, I definitely, uh, I think I'm like you, man. I definitely enjoy my, my corals or take time to enjoy them more when people come and look. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, that is fun. That is very fun. The piece that we grow is, is, is the nastiest mycetum ever. It's better than the Roger Rampage. Give it a name recently, people have been going crazy over that thing. It's, it's insanity. Does it grow well and hardy? Yeah, it's been doing well. We had it for about maybe 10 months, something like that. Very fun. I love the multicolored mouths. A little bit of orange, a little bit of green. Doesn't even look like there's a pattern to it. So there's the Roger. Look. See how much better that is over there? I don't be hating on the Raja no, now. No, I'm not. <laughs> but I'm saying, look at the two colors. But yeah, the it's, eyes it's, change is better. I hate it's, to tell you, once the neon comes. Definitely a lot, uh, a lot more yeah, unique you nowadays. Two color eyes is better than just one color eye. <laughs> two is better than one. That's a Vic quote right there. <laughs> what do we have here? This is a nice classic watermelon alien eye. Still remembering the first frag of that sold for $400 back in 2001. Never really thought the sky was falling. All right. Oh, I haven't even seen this at all. Got some, uh, you know, some bread and butter zinnia and some anthelia and some suspicularia. Some nice, hardy beginner soft corals. And then back there, 
variety of rainbow NEMS. Rainbow, rainbow, rainbow. Let me just uh, zoom in on this section right here. God, I'm so pleased with how the color is coming out because this is really what it looks like in real life. Super amazing. Look at all that. This has got to be a clonal species. And when you have a bunch, it splits a bunch. And you see they got some love for the green cabbage leather. This is how you frag soft corals, you guys. Cut off a little piece, put in a basket, let it attach, and then you take that little piece and you glue it to a frag plug. And then, oh, here we've got the shroom central. Let me just give you an overview. This is all Rhodactus and Recordius. Looks like this tank's just a little bit dimmer than the others. But if we zoom in, you'll see some nice subtle details about each one. This one's got some nice little pink vesicles. Got the super bright. This is a fun tank, man. It's actually really fun to turn off all the flow and see everything at once. Ooh, Recordia, Florida. The Australians must be like salivating right now because they love their Yumas. That's all they can get. Yeah. But these Floridas, man, these are creme de la creme right here. Oh, collectibles. Yep, look at this one right here. It's not even solid orange. It just has like random, random orange colored beads. That's a coral I just will never get old. They will never get out of style. Oh, and I would be remiss if I didn't show off a couple of the jawbreakers. And believe it or not, way over there, way over there, is a tank just for jawbreakers. Right there. I'll see if I can get a close up later. There's the shroom tank. Now you gotta have a certain amount of nutrients for the shrooms. Otherwise they'll just wither away and die on you. Ooh, there's another fun one over there in the corner. Look at that. Look at that. I like this one, Jake. The pinkish purple one with the green rim. Mm-hmm. See how different that is? Yep. Man, I do miss the days when you could get wild rocks of uh, Recordia. Yeah. That was long, long, long ago. It's been a long time. A little bit of pink beaded specimen there. And that's that subtle pink. All right, let's, let's show off a few more of these. I did, I did. A variety of Rhodactus. One random Blastamusa out of place. What is this guy right here, this uh, two-colored moon coral? I don't know, some Fabais of some type, I don't know. Is, is that a new strain for you guys? No, no, no. What do we call the body with the two colors? That's cool. Very cool. Even one side, just one of the colored side is dope. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, it's either the one we call pyrokinesis or the other one. They look so similar, I have a hard time telling them from here. Dude, Recordia Central over here. I'm, a, I'm a kind of running out of things to say about these corals. They're just so colorful and diverse. All right, so that was a third of the aquaculture farm. This, this tank is one that really touches my heart. Just almost a countless number of Acan Echinata strains. There's a couple sub Echinatas in here, maybe one or two Rotunda Floras. These are the real Acans. I have a small collection myself, but definitely not this many. Let's, uh, let's take a close up on some of the, uh, the brighter ones here. The old school guys watching this will remember Agent Orange, shout out to my buddy Ali, who, who knows exactly what I'm talking about. First Agent Orange, Acan Echinatas, all of the different colors. It's, it's really cool that they um, are putting some effort in this 
often overlooked group of corals. But you see, I mean, there is no crummy one. There's no crummy one. They're just all different varieties. Some of them have the orange mouths, like that, like that. Some of them have green mouths, like that, or like that, or like that. Just super freaking fun. These are Acan Echinodus. This is uh, one of my favorite patches of, of corals here in the farm because this is uh, kind of harkens back to the early 2000s when this group of corals was first starting to be you know, part of what we enjoyed, recognized, and looked for. Let me just show you a couple more. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I don't even know how you keep track of the Acan strains. It's hard to. Nice classic right there, Montepora salata. We've got them for days. The only problem I've had with this coral in my Montepora tank, it is the nudibranch magnet. Yeah. They, they go for that. There's, there'll be like no sign of nudibranch. And then I'll add a little stellata, just a couple weeks. It's like, oh, there they are again. There's definitely going to be some people who are like, this is a long video. <laughs> Lots of eye candy, but the thing is, speeding it up. This, yeah, this is kind of rushing through. No matter how long this video comes, no matter how slow I go, that will be like speeding through. Ooh, is that baby's breath? Kind of, kind of looks like a little baby's breath right there. I love, that's one thing that Vic and I always had in common just an appreciation for the ultra weird, the, cor the corals with no names, corals with no respect and appreciation. These are all Broussard colonies. Oh, I don't discriminate, you know I collect them all. If you don't have it, you gotta have it. Yep. If you don't already have it, give it to them. Here's some uh, sorted chalices here. Some lords, always love lords with some orange rings and some orange details to them. Ooh, this one. This one is the truth. Little pink mouth, orange rim, a little bit of striping. Oh my lord. I always love these muted ones because they remind me of the first ones we got from Indonesia. Yeah. Back in like mid 2000s, yep. early 2000s. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I saw one, it was the year 2004. My Ooh. friend told me, like, yo, you gotta see this candy cane, it's got red and white and green. And I'm like, what do you mean a candy cane? We, the, the, we didn't even know what it was. We were trying to figure out what it was. I know for at first they were being imported as Blastamusa. Is that what it was? Because people didn't, they didn't know. Didn't know. Vincent's doing good. Yeah. I think he's lonely. <laughs> well, because he doesn't get to travel and no one's coming to visit him. This is the uh, encrusting section. It's the uh, branching cephastria for the, for the connoisseurs. That's the green with the red mouths. And there's the pink with the red mouths. And I recently got an all green branching cephastria. Yeah, nice. I think without a, without exception, it's fair to say that uh, Worldwide Corals and Victor put Stylocene Yellow on the map. I think I was one of the first people to recognize that coral in the trade when they were bringing in red varieties. They just, no one believed me, but you guys totally popularized them. Can't believe how many- Beautiful corals. You know, it's just- Growers, beautiful, different patterns, you know? Very good encruster. They get fuzzy when they get really healthy. That's, that's, you know, one of the uh, take home messages of all these corals. You know, a lot of these strains you can see around. You can find them if you know what you're looking for, but if they're not in the peak of health, you just are not gonna be able to see and appreciate the nuances, the detail.
You burn out on names? Yeah. Burn out on so uh, here's something for the, the Zoe nuts. Oh, we got more Zoas over there, but this is just some of the agriculture ones. I'll show you. Zoanthid nuts. Good old Colorado sunburst. There's the, uh, the magic, the one that started it all for the sunburst. I'll never forget. See, oh, here's a good example. Here we have the uh, Rostazos and the Marleys. So really similar. But if you don't know what you're looking for, they might look really, really almost the same. Pallies, Soanthids. Pallies, Soanthus. If you love Zoanthids, don't take this the wrong way. But to me, zoanthids are not corals. They are miniature anemones. But I'm a coral nut. But for some reason, they just they don't tickle that that coral. They don't scratch that coral edge for me. Maybe Midas touch. Maybe what do they call these? Alien eyes or scrambled eggs? I always forget. I think this is going to uh, wrap it up for the coral bank back here in the aquacultured section of World of White Corals. Oh man, that double green blasto. Just freaking fantastic. There's another one with that kind of a pink skirt and green mouths. This is a this is actually a pretty rare coral that people don't really recognize. Uh, the all green yeah. uh, Merletti. Yeah. I got a piece. I got a pretty good chunk of that. I never. You know what? I think I bought those on Ripstock like two years ago, three years ago. I think. I, did. I don't remember who I got mine from. But we, we probably we probably got it from the same guy. But you know, back in the day, that right there, that was the hottest coral you could find. Yeah. Just a regular red blasto with green mouths. Never ever thought. It's so, that, so many different morphs that, of it though. Right, but it never thought because yeah. they, they, they only came in, you know, very shades of red with green mouth. Yeah. But that was the epitome of a blastamusa. That's pretty this one is. Back in the day. Are you pointing at the green one? The corner one, yeah. The red with the green. 